am 99% sure that AEW is just taking the week off next week because they're nice guys and girls and they get it. So this could be the last AEW duck of the year. Although now I say that, maybe they will squeeze one more in before 2020. I don't know. Wrestling goes crazy when you get to the end of a calendar. You get a show here. Raw was taped the other day. Who even knows? I bet one day we'll just be having pay-per-views on Christmas and pay-per-views on New Year's Day because who can't get enough of pay-per-views? Anyway, everyone calm down. It doesn't matter. It's just wrestling shows. We have had another one though and it was All Elite Wrestling's Dark. So I've decided to take this. This is called the Finger of Power and I give the good bits an up and I give the bad bits a down. Remember when it comes to Dark, because it's kind of like a B show that airs on YouTube, we just calm down and we enjoy the train of fun. Let's up those downs. Quite the start too dark this week because it feels like AEW is putting more importance on it. We had a big video reminding us that later on on Dynamite, we're going to get the Young Bucks taking on SCU. And Matt and Nick were like, this is one of the most important matches of our entire lives, even though the people in SCU are our friends and we just hope this doesn't ruin our Christmas plans. They may be worried about that, but I am more worried about them being pain free for the holiday season because you just know they going to go crazy. Hilariously, we also found out that Vicky Guerrero was going to be on guest commentary this week. And what a you know weird reaction that was. People cheered her at first. Then she was doing, excuse me. And everyone was booing her. She's an interesting cat, but I think she did okay. We then moved into our first match, which was SCU taken on Private Party. And that kind of started a theme for the evening. Because obviously, if SCU had lost here, that would have thrown a spanner in the works for their tag team title battle against the Young Bucks. And AEW kept doing that all over the place this evening. And as for their opponents, Private Party, well, they have kind of been all over the place recently. They may have got that surprise win in the tournament, but what really have they done since? Not a lot. It's all well and good doing that, but you got to follow it up. Taking that, throwing it aside, giving it up. As ever with AEW, they shine a healthy spotlight on their tag team division, and this was just nice and easy to watch. Kazarian and Cassidy were in there first. And they wanted to pin each other more than Mojo Rawley wants to actually get to show off his blue face. Like, I really like that because, you know, wrestling is meant to be about trying to win. It's meant to be a fight. And because they kept trying to pin each other, I was like, oh, look, they're trying to win. After that, SCU got into control for a while until Cassidy got the hot tag. And then him and Quinn were doing like these really cool tag team moves. I can't even explain one. But they had Scorpio Sky and they did this bulldog thing. I was like, man, that's like something I would have seen in No Mercy back in the day. Eventually, Quinn did miss the shooting star press, though, and that opened the door for Kazarian and Scorpio Sky. They hit the SCU later. Get it? It's like a, a play on words. Thankfully, nothing is going to stop them taking on Matt and Nick Jackson on Dynamite. And I was thinking about this during the match. I was like, could we actually see a title change before we get to the end of the year? I can kind of feel it in the waters. And I know that SCU haven't really defended those belts that much, but I don't know. It may just be quite exciting to start 2020, you know, with the Young Bucks who basically started All Elite Wrestling being like, wait, we did it. I don't think that would be the worst thing in the world. So there is an impromptu, out of nowhere prediction for you. I'll likely get it wrong. And I told you we were making Dark more important too, as well as recap videos about Big Swole and Brandy Rhodes. From last week, we also got told that this week we're getting Chris Statlander taking on Britt Baker and whoever wins that match will become the number one contender for Riho's title. As long as we can find Riho, she has gone missing. They are one and two in the rankings, as was also discussed. And again, much like the match we'd already seen, these two were now going into individual matches on Dark. And imagine they lost, they would be out of that number one contender fight. I like small things like this, like a dangling carrot. As for the dentist too, well, she was basically in a squash match. She was taken on Machiko, which no, is not a brand new move for Rusev. And although she got a little bit of offense in there, eventually Britt Baker just super kicked her right in the face and then locked on uh, the locked jaw because she's a dentist and she loves mouths and she loves teeth. And yeah, Magico tapped out. Britt Baker was like, yeah, brah, I'm going to Dynamite to win. I mean, this was nothing really, but it's about the bigger picture. And I enjoyed that it was quick and that it was fast and that it felt different from other things I'd seen on this show. Give it up. This carried on as well because then it was time for Chris Statlander to also test her skills. And yes, I get told this every week. I'm well aware that she is an alien, but what do you want me to do with that? I need to see how alien she is as the weeks and months go on. And I have so many questions like, is she an alien or is she just a person who thinks she's an alien? There's a big difference. 
I know now you're saying, well, Simon, she's not a real alien. I, I, I know she's not a real alien. I'm not an idiot. I mean, within the realms of AEW TV, of Dynamite, of professional wrestling, am I supposed to think she's an alien? We're going to have to give Max Moon a call. Anyway, she was going against B Priestley, and once again, it was made very clear if she lost, she wouldn't be getting nothing on Dynamite later. So she was going to have to win. Give it up. And this was fine too. We teased at one point that B had her number. There was no way that the UFO loving person was going to be able to get out of this. But actually, the turn in the tide came from a narrative standpoint. Think about that. These are meant to be dark matches, and now we're relying on story to get to the end of the road. I like it. The Nightmare Collective were at ringside, and they were demanded that Chris told them what was inside Area 51. That's not true at all. They were just cheering her on, because you know, they really want Chris Statlander to join this bizarre group, whatever the hell they're doing. Like I say, I could get behind them. I know I don't really understand the vignettes and videos that we have been airing every single week, but I appreciate them trying to tie it in. It must have spurned Chris on as well because she hit the Big Bang Theory, which is not a reference to that TV show. And indeed, she got the victory over B Priestley. So everybody calm down, breathe. It's all right. Britt Baker versus Chris Stanlander to become the number one contender is still happening in but a few hours' time. I think the alien may actually win. I did get somewhat of my wish afterwards, though, because Statlander cut a promo and she called us all puny humans and that she was going to use the gravitational pull to ensure that the AEW women's title comes to her. She also said that she was going to be our leader. So yes, I think... Well, no, actually, I still don't know. Like, because if you were an alien, you would say that. And if you thought you were an alien, you'd say that too. So we're still none the wiser. But yes, Chris Stanlander is an alien. I didn't even say her name right there because I'm just so confused by this, but also intrigued. I mean, when was the last time we had an alien gimmick? Man, did I love the main event, though. I know it's not for everybody, and I know there's going to be some funny daddies going, this makes wrestling look absolutely ludicrous, but I disagree. I don't even care. It's like a roller coaster. I had fun. Up. It was Pack and the Hybrid 2, which is quite the team, and they were taking on the best friends as well as Orange Cassidy. And I tell you, Orange Cassidy, so many people are ready to be down on Orange Cassidy and insult Orange Cassidy, but when he got in the ring... During this match, the crowd went so nuts. If you had closed your eyes, I bet I could have convinced you this was Hulk Hogan versus The Rock from WrestleMania 18. I mean, boy, howdy, did people like the man named after a fruit. And it was even better because you had the silliness of Cassidy mixed with the absolute bastardness of Pac. I mean, after Orange had got the hot tag, again, not only did the audience go ballistic, but just seeing Pac stare down Orange Cassidy... That is not something I knew I needed until last night. And now I've got it and I'm a better person. Pac was awesome throughout all of this as well, especially when he broke up an attempted hug by the best friend, but I know you mostly want to know about, like I say, when the former Neville went eye to eye with Orange Cassidy. And the problem people have with Orange Cassidy is he does those stupid kicks. People are like, well, that's not realistic. That, who would ever do something like that? And you would be right if the person taking said kicks sold it, but they don't. When he was kicking Pac here, Pac, couldn't have looked more pissed off. He's like, what are you doing, you stupid little dweeb? But then it got even better because when he went to smack him in the face for being such a nerd, Orange Cassidy turned it on like he is wont to do and he nailed Pac with a tornado DDT and it was absolutely wonderful. He also did all his hand in the pocket spots. Orange Cassidy is just brilliant. I know maybe he's got a shelf life, but I'm going to enjoy the ride till then. Pac also got more and more irate drawing this because it was only when he was in the ring that his team had any momentum. I mean, when Jack Evans and Han Helico were in there, they kept getting their ass whipped and you could just see on Pac's face, he was like, I can't stand anybody. All of this did lead to the best friends and Orange Cassidy doing their big cuddle in the ring, which again, the crowd just absolutely loved, but really they should be keeping their eyes on the prize because Pat kicked Cassidy onto the floor and even though Trent tried to roll him up he was never gonna fall for that and Pat locked on the brutalizer and he got the submission win and he still wasn't happy because Pat is never happy and that was it for this week's dark and yeah it's not the best thing you're ever gonna see in your damn life but I found it exceptionally entertaining to the point I couldn't find any downs especially because of that main event it's just I mean, it's on YouTube. Go and watch it. It's well accessible. You just click a couple of times. You're on YouTube right now. Watch some what culture stuff. And then go check out AEW Dark. I just love Pac. I love Orange Cassidy. And again, I didn't know I ever wanted to see that interaction. But now I've got it. And nobody can ever take it away from me. Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about AEW Dark. You would have found something you don't like. And I would have liked it. And then we'll fall out. But then we'll get back together again. Like, share and subscribe. Head on over to whatculture.com. Read yourself some articles. Some of which will be about AEW Dark. Go and watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling, then leave here, go to Twitter, follow What Culture, and 
What Culture WWE. My name is Simon from What Culture, and I'm going to say this in every video until the year rounds up because I just want to, I genuinely want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting me and being here and watching me and doing all of those things from the start of 2019 to now. Even if you joined halfway through the year, even if you've only been watching for a week, the fact you do take your finger of power, <laughs> you see what I did there, and click one of my videos or any What Culture video makes me a very, very, very humbled man. I'll see you again very soon and of course a little bit early happy christmas happy hanukkah happy holiday season happy whatever you celebrate just make sure you have a good time